today. We've talked a lot about how divided this country is, with extremists even talking about another civil war. Mm. Our next guest, though, luckily, has a solution to all of that. Kurt Anderson took a recent trip through Appalachia and chronicles what he learned in a new piece titled Doing Our Bit to Avoid a Civil War. Leave your bubble. Get out into the USA. It's too easy to fear and loathe people you encounter only secondhand on screens. And the best-selling author of Evil Genius isn't the host of the World As You Know It podcast joins us now. Kurt, it is so great as always uh, to talk to you. Um, I will uh, ask you uh, to tell us all what you found when you uh, took off your black, uh, as you said, libtard uh, Brooklyn outfit uh, and uh, jumped in the car with your wife and went to Appalachia. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I learned that I'm supposed to call it Appalachia when I got there. But uh, yeah. Uh, we, we, yeah, it, I mean, it was partly a result of, you know, how we've all lived in the pandemic, just locked in our homes, but also I think ever more, more than ever, you know, looking at the internet, looking at television, uh, talking to the people we already know, and and fretting and worrying, and and, and so th there was a special like late pandemic escape aspect to this. And so yeah, we 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 drove south and and visited friends of ours in Virginia and West Virginia and elsewhere, but just talked to and met normal folks as well. And you know, it it was it came as a kind of visceral revelation, not anything I didn't know, but that oh, out in the world among people that are presumptively my political opponents, adversaries maybe would hate me uh, in the abstract because we're in places that, you know, are 80, 85, 90, 95 percent uh, Trump districts. And I carried my little map with me to see what that was everywhere I went. But, you know, uh, you, you realize, and again, you know, but people don't care that much about politics day to day. They're living their lives. They, they have strong opinions, but they don't, uh, whether the, the fact that they voted for Donald Trump, most of them, uh, the vast majority of them do, doesn't define to themselves who they are. And right. again, being pretty off the grid, I realized that by by just talking to one another, by just watching MSNBC, by by just looking at Twitter, um, we we turn ourselves into people who don't quite look, meet other people where they live as real people, as opposed to yeah. kind of cartoon characters on on TV. Yeah, it's just not the real world. Twitter's just not the real world. Uh, if you sit around and watch cable news 24 hours a day, you're disengaged from the real world. You know, it, it, you, I always love having James and Deborah Fellows on the show because, of course, they've done this uh, riding, uh, flying their Cessna across the country. And they talk about uh, how uplifted they are when they go all across America. Uh, and, and they come to the same conclusion that you do. That, and their conclusion is... What I always, you know, they say America works. It works. The cities, the towns, the villages, the ham. America works. And, and you get outside of Washington. And so often we confuse the dysfunction of Washington with what's going on in this world. And yes, I understand there are great divides between blue state America and red state America when it comes to politics. But I've been really blessed. Um, I've grown up in Georgia. Uh, Meridian, Mississippi, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, uh, Northwest Florida in Pensacola, what, what we all call the Redneck Riviera. And I've also lived on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Uh, and what I have found is, this sounds shocking, but parents on the Upper West Side of Manhattan pretty much want the same exact thing that parents in Meridian, Mississippi want for their children. I know you would never know that by watching cable news or, 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 or being on Twitter, but it is really striking how similar people's uh, hopes and dreams and expectations are. It's just a question of how they think to best, they can best get there. No, that, that's true. And it's funny that you mentioned Jim and Deb Fallows who were doing that 
expedition and, and putting out that book just as I was putting out my book, Fantasyland. And we talked about it, Jim and I, and, and our, our kind of, I was saying, America, kind of crazy and maybe irredeemably so. And he said, no, they're, everybody's good. And of course, the, tr the truth is, to me, is we're both right, right? <laughs> you know, that, that, that there, there's, there's real deep abiding issues about fake news, false truth, all, all of those problems we know and that I wrote a book right. about. But that, but this idea that we are inevitably, inexorably sliding toward a civil war, which is, you know, everywhere you go uh, on <laughs> in, in the media, but in real life as well, people talk about that. I, you know, it could happen. I'm not saying it, it all is good because people on the Upper West Side and Meridian, Mississippi fundamentally agree. We're all humans. We're all Americans. But we don't. We, we can get hysterical and I think make it a kind of self-fulfilling downfall if we if we don't get out there and actually see people unlike us. You know, and, and the thing about New York City, I, I, I spent a lot of time staring at studying maps of how people voted. New York, you know, yes, it's it was, you know, New York City, 78 percent Joe Biden, 22 percent Donald Trump. But there are big patches of Brooklyn, New York, full of 80, 90 percent Trump voters. So. Diversity exists everywhere, even in New York. And, and the trick is to sort of see people as people, not as caricatured evil villains who are going to destroy our democracy. Now, which isn't to say that there aren't people trying to destroy democracy and that we have to use every political means to stop that. But, but the, this human to human necessity to sort of cool the temperature a little bit, I think is really important. Kurt, you made the point very smart earlier that we tend, because it's easier, to retreat to our bubbles sometimes. But those bubbles that are cable news and the specific Facebook page I look at or Twitter are not representative of what's going on out there. I grew up in the New York area. I've lived in New York for a long time, consider myself a New Yorker, but I come from Midwestern stock. I went to college and lived in the South for 10 years. And that exposure and that background is the best thing I could ever impart to anyone else and suggest they do themselves because you don't buy into the cartoon versions of other people and where they come from. So I'm curious, as you went down there, perhaps expecting to meet some resistance and got just the opposite, what gave you hope about how we stitch this thing back together to the extent it needs to be? Well, we have Americans, as we've read again and again and seen the studies, sorted ourselves geographically into, into more and more like-minded places. That is what it is. The trick is to, to counteract that. The trick is to, you know, talk to people as people and, and regard people as people, whether it's, you know, I, I was wondering when the opposite happens. And we all, you guys walking around your beloved 30 Rock, see plenty of people from all over America, the, you know, Trump America, Red America, MAGA America, wandering around Midtown Manhattan. I wonder, well, do those people, they, they come to New York, do they, do they feel differently, a little differently than their neighbors who don't? I, I hope that's true. I think that's true. I think mingling and seeing one another in real life is 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 important and, and pe not people just like you. And again, I talk to people, my sister, for instance, my one of my sisters is a town official in a little town in upstate New York, a, a Democrat, but works with Republicans, lives with Republicans. And, and uh, she's a political scientist as well, but she, because of this day-to-day -day work, she doesn't see all Republicans as irredeemably evil because it's harder to see real people who you're in the store with or who you're at the cobbler with or whatever as, uh, you know, they're, they're not all Marjorie Taylor Greens and Josh Hawley, you know? And I think that, that I mean, and, and again, I'm not saying, oh, they're all nice. And of course, as many people responded to me about this piece said, well, you're a white guy. You and your wife are white people. Well, of course, everyone was nice to you. And, and for sure, if we weren't, we would have had a different experience, as we would have had a different experience 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 50 years ago. It's, 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 so this, my piece was about this, holy cow, what's going to happen to America feeling that everybody has now? Uh, and this civil war that may be brewing. And and yeah, people have bad thoughts and bad ideas and bad opinions and all of that. We, we can't, yeah. uh, uh, we can't, the, the, the standard of American success can't be, 
they they may not have those bad opinions. Yes, they're going to have those bad opinions, and they'll vote ways we don't want. But that doesn't mean we can't all live together here the way we did when some of us voted for McGovern and some right. of us voted for George Wallace and some of us voted for Goldwater and some of us voted for Bobby Kennedy. Yeah, we figured out a way to get through it. Mika, I, yeah, and, and you, you've you seen this firsthand, I, and I always say it on this show, uh, uh, most of my friends and family members, uh, neighbors voted for Donald Trump. And uh, when I, you know, I coach baseball a good bit, I've done it for three seasons uh, with Jack, and I, I'm fully aware that the parents of most of the, the players uh, that I coached voted for Donald Trump, and they would see me just, uh, you know, going after him day after day after day on this show. They didn't care. Like, they, they were, again, just because they disagreed with me. The, I think in th over three seasons, the only time anybody ever said anything is when a guy came up to me, put his arm around me and laughed and said, hey, coach, take it easy on my president. And I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> all right, let's talk baseball. And but it was it was good natured. And that was for the entire league. I would I would guess that most of the people that were out at the league probably, uh, you know, uh, voted about as much for Donald Trump uh, in, in this area as uh, as the areas where Kurt went. And again, yeah. and I've seen it time and time again, this doesn't mean, doesn't mean there aren't bad people out there. It doesn't mean, you know, that they're, they're, uh, that everybody's experiences are going to be the same. I'm just saying uh, it's it's just not what you read on Twitter. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.